If you're a regular viewer here, you've likely heard the term API plenty of times. But if you've clicked on this video, well, there's a good chance that you aren't quite sure what that actually is. Let me explain. For the TikTok generation, an API is an application programming interface and it's the way that computers talk to each other. You can swipe on now if you don't want the extra information. For the rest of you, well, first of all, thank you very much for sticking around. And second, let me explain more. APIs are everywhere, from AI to Amazon, with some being more visible than others. Every website that you go to that lets you log in has an API that you'll never see, unless you look in DevTools anyway. But some are very public. If you've looked at Olama, for example, you know that there are only two ways to talk to an Olama model, either via the terminal directly or via their API. Websites often offer free or paid API access, with a few controversial examples from recent memory being Reddit and Twitter. But what does that actually mean? Well, an API is generally a web thing where the data is sent over network protocols. You can have local APIs. Olama is actually a good example for that, as you basically just send a request to port 11434 on localhost, as in your machine, and it returns a response. But that's basically the same process for internet-based APIs too. Let me also distinguish the difference between public and private APIs, at least quickly. Websites that let you sign in or buy stuff and generally are anything more than just a static landing page all have a backend, aka an API. Modern websites are built with two main parts, the front end, the actual web page that you see, and the back end, the bit that handles loading and storing data. If you log into a website, the front end sends requests to the back end. It sends your hopefully encrypted password and username. And then the API, API sends back a login token that lets you log in. The front end then checks for that token every time you, you know, request a new secure page and send that token along with important requests to prove that you're authenticated to make those requests. Those are private APIs, ones that you won't ever really know exist, or ones that you can't meaningfully interact with outside the expected application, which is the website it's tied to. Public APIs, on the other hand, have publicly accessible endpoints, documentation on how to request data, sometimes how to authenticate yourself, and things like data limits too. This is probably what you think about when you hear API, like the YouTube API or Reddit API, a way to extract or enter data programmatically to another site or service. That part, programmatically, is actually really important here. Take the YouTube API, for example. You can just go to the YouTube website and edit the video's title by clicking on all the buttons and you know, typing what you want and clicking save. That works, obviously. But what if you want to get the current stream viewer account for your stream deck or your subscriber account for one of those fancy digital clock type things? Well, the clock can't exactly load up the website and find it. Uh, okay, it can, that's called scraping, and we'll come back to that in a second. But it'd just be way easier if the clock could really simply ask Google, hey, how many subscribers does this channel have? And Google just replies with the number. And for pushing data, like updating a title with a live price of the product that's in the video, well, again, you could manually go and update it yourself every, you know, however long, every hour or something, but that'd be a massive pain, you know, to even have a computer try and load the website and then find the buttons to press, input the new data, and then find the button to save. Wouldn't it be much easier if you could just send a single request to Google to say, hey, change this video's title, please, to this, and Google just got, does it and replies, no problem, done. Well, that's what the YouTube API is for. I said that we'd get back to scraping, so here it goes. Scraping is when you have your program load up the web page and extract information manually. 
This is possible, although a number of sites block non-web browsers from even accessing the site outright, or at least without a user agent in the header anyway. And also, it's very inefficient and fragile. APIs are generally pretty stable. They do upgrade from time to time, especially with like big companies like Amazon, whatever, where you know they might be breaking changes, as in changes that break the current structure and require the requester's you know part to to uh, changes on the, the requester's part to make it work. But that's somewhat rare. The front end changes are way more frequent. The data you're looking for might move, or might change tag names, or the layout might change, or if you're entering data, the steps required to do that might just be completely different from when you set it up, meaning you have to remake the whole bot just to make it work again. APIs provide a frictionless read easier solution that's more efficient, sort of safer for everyone, and generally easier to work with. APIs, both public and private, are made up of endpoints. They are sp the specific questions that you can ask the API. They can be in a couple of different forms. GET requests are for asking the server to return information to you. Here you can generally encode any request data in the URL. So when you search on Amazon for something, you'll notice that the URL goes from amazon.co.uk to amazon.co.uk slash s question mark k equals whatever you searched. That's because k equals is a URL parameter that the backend uses to know what you searched for to then return items that the search page can display. The other common form of request is a post request. That's where you provide some data to the server. Sometimes that's just for sending data to the server. For uh, example, you know, changing the title in YouTube would be a push request as you push the new title to Google. But sometimes it's used to send data that the server can do something with and then send back. We'll see some examples of that in a minute. It's worth noting that there are other HTTP request types like put that you might find occasionally, but get and post are by far the most common. Let's take a look at two free public APIs, starting with a nice simple one, DigitalOcean status API. Their documentation page shows that there are eight endpoints in total, although a couple of them are more just subsets of each other. Also, technically speaking, this really is just a list of static JSON files that DigitalOcean programmatically generates, but it's close enough for what we're trying to you know, see here for our example. I'm using a tool called Insomnia, which let, is a great thing for testing APIs and just web development in general. And here I've got a GET request set up for DigitalOcean's main status endpoint. Sending the request returns an awfully long JSON file with the current status of every DigitalOcean service, every server region, everything. There is a lot here, but this is easily decipherable for a program. If you wanted to do something with this data automatically, you can pretty easily. Looking at the scheduled maintenances, you can see that the last 50 entries with, you know, explanation texts and everything. The incidents are the same, showing what services were affected, the, the status of the incident, any identified causes. And again, especially with like scheduled maintenances, this could be really useful if you're hosting something on DigitalOcean. You can have your service that's running on DigitalOcean check this to see if your server is going to go down at any point and flag up a warning in the front end for users who are using the website to let them know that, hey, our hosting provider is going to go down for this amount of time just to let you know. The other one I wanted to look at is a more proper API, this time one called Vector Express. This is a free image conversion API with a whole bunch of endpoints, actually an endpoint to know what endpoint to use. You send a GET request to the convert file type, auto tool and output file type to get back what actual endpoints to use. In my case, I want to turn an SVG into an EPS file, so I'll run slash convert slash SVG slash auto slash EPS and use the top result that uses a librsvg to do the conversion. 
Now we need to send them the image we want to convert. So that requires a post request with the image as the body and 480 milliseconds later, we get the converted image back. Well, we get a link to that that we can then download and open in Illustrator to see that, yes, this is a properly converted EPS file with the layers for each, you know, path and everything. I would guesstimate that the majority of at least public API endpoints are all GET. Fetching data from a service, uh, you know, rather than be that like stock market prices or Reddit posts for your third party Reddit app, it's more rare to find free public post request endpoints because that requires sending data to the server and that's a lot harder to protect against. Paid APIs exist in plentiful supply, of course, but if you are watching this video and actually learning stuff, then it's probably best to stick to the free ones until you're sure that you won't be racking up an insane API bill by accident. This is also where you might run into quotas and rate limits, where you can only send so many requests either in total or per minute respectively. This is mostly only a problem when you're incorporating an API into a program or website that needs to send a lot of API requests to actually work, like Locally Links' Amazon stock checking, for example. So in short, APIs are a way for computers to talk to each other. They're made up of endpoints, which can be GET or POST requests. They can send out data or receive it. They can be limited by total or periodic request counts, and at least when available mean that you don't need to scrape a site. They can be private when building a website or public and even run locally, but it's basically always over network traffic and that's what an API is. Of course, while I have developed a website, Locally Links, and actually a few other projects, uh, I'm still somewhat, you know, on the outside of the web development world. So if I've missed anything, especially anything you think is crucial information that people should know, or if I've got something wrong, because I am also an idiot, uh, feel free to let me know in the comments down below and share the uh, the knowledge with everyone. Um, if you want to see more videos like this one, feel free to hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notification icon, check out plenty of other Tech Explained videos on the end cards, and otherwise I'm gonna go rest my voice now. I'll, uh, I'll catch you all in the next video. Check out my own hardware, link in the description, and yeah, see you all in the next video.